So, uh, uh, we are going to extend the discussion on oblique shock to something called shock reflections. Okay. So, it is going to be uh, reflections or shock interactions, shock shock interactions. Okay. So, what do I mean by shock reflection? So, suppose I have a plate here and I have a flow which is greater than 1 and somehow I have a oblique shock here. This may be due to a body that is kept here at some angle or due to whatever. Let us forget about the reasons why we have a shock here, we just have a shock here. So, there is a shock here. So, as we know there is be a velocity vector that is coming, streamlines that is coming. Because of the shock there will be a, a turn. Now, somehow the flow uh, after this, if this is an infinitely long plate, the flow somewhere has to turn towards the uh, uh, in line with your uh, surface. So, if there is a flow that is at an angle, this goes and hits the surface. So, to avoid that kind of scenario, the flow would uh, take another shock wave, which is the reflected shock wave from the uh, surface. So, the flow comes here and makes a turn like this, so that the streamlines are in parallel with uh, this thing. Now, this happens because we are uh, doing a inverted flow analysis, we avoid separations here. So, in reality there may be uh, a region where you can have a shock that is going like this within the boundary layer and it can reflect like this. So, there will be region here which can have separations which are typically uh, due to the shock. Uh, 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 typically called as shock induced uh, separations. So, you can have oblique shock that is going to take you this way or you can have uh, streamlines that is going this way within the boundary layer. You can also if you consider viscosity it can you can also have separations and other things. Let us not discuss that rather we will discuss the first case which is the inverted flow. And we will restrict to a flow like uh, uh, which is a, a regular reflection from the surface. Okay. So, I have a reflection from the wall and then I uh, get it or if I can have if I have a channel which suddenly uh, uh, reduces in area. So, if I have a channel like this, so the Mach number incoming Mach number is greater than 1. So, because of this there will be a sh oblique shock that is formed here and because of this uh, top surface there will be another oblique shock that forms here. This can interact at some position if these angles are same they will interact at the center line otherwise there would be a, a different uh, location in which uh, uh, they interact depending on this angle uh, say alpha 1 and this angle alpha 2. Okay. And once this reflects uh, there will be another oblique shock that is formed out of this. Again the flow direction you can get it. So, if you know these angles, if you know the de the deflection angle from our theta beta relation, you can further get uh, the angles at which uh, the outcoming flow is. So, you can have m 1 greater than 1 here and then you have a region here. So, this is region 1, this is region 2, this is region 3 and this is so, I call this as region 4 and region 4 dash. Okay. 
So depending on if these angles are same, then I can have 4 and 4 dash uh, of same kind. Otherwise, the Mach numbers here at 4 and Mach number here at 4 dash can be different depending on the angle at which these uh, shocks are reflected. Okay. So we are going to do some problems related to this. So all this because a uniform uh, constant area duct suddenly deflects at uh, two different angles and there are so shock reflections that is happening here and the streamlines uh, are going to do these kinds of uh, uh, phenomena. Now the point to note here is that I have drawn a dash line here. Okay. So this is a region where demarcates 4 and 4 dash. The 4 and 4 dash, the properties in 4 and 4 dash namely the Mach number or uh, the pressure or entropy change everything depends on the angle at which these shocks are reflected within 4 and in 3 and 2. So if the angles are same, 4 and 4 dash should be same. Otherwise, the entropy change across these the top shock, uh, shocks are different from the bottom shocks. Okay. So there is a sudden entropy change, that entropy change at 4 and the entropy change in the region 4 dash is different. So there will be a discontinuity of entropy change in 4 and 4 dash and that happens at this particular dash line which is called as slip line where my entropy change is uh, discontinuous, my uh, Mach number is discontinuous except the pressure P4 is same as P4 dash across the uh, slip line and the direction of velocity, direction of velocity is same across slip line. Okay. All other properties can have a sudden jump, temperature can have a sudden jump or uh, uh, all those quantities, densities can have a, a sudden jump everything can have, can have a sudden jump. So if you take a pressure contour of this, you are not going to visualize the slip line. Whereas if you plot the Mach number contours, you will see a slip line uh, uh, according to this particular configuration. Okay. The same thing is happening at a flow uh, in a nozzle. So if I have a CD nozzle, okay, if my PB is uh, between uh, PB critical 2 and PB critical 3 which means my uh, shock is, so if I have a isentropic solution like this, so this is my PB critical 3 and this is PB critical 1. Now if my shock is outside the uh, nozzle, so which is, uh, so you if I have a shock here, I have a PB critical 2. So if my back pressure is between these two values, I would have a shock that is happening outside the nozzle. Okay. So in that scenario also, you would have, you would see these kinds of flow. The schematic of which is what I have it here. So in the slide, what you have here is the PB critical 2 which is Mach number, uh, some Mach number where the shock is sitting at the exit, exit of the nozzle. Now if I reduce my PB further, this shock is pushed downstream and hence you would see a uh, oblique shock, a strong oblique shock sitting outside the nozzle. Okay. And your Mach number after the shock is uh, typically less than 1. But if you reduce, uh, keep uh, reducing the pressure ratio, pressure ratio is PB by uh, P0, then I have uh, a reflection shock like something like this. Okay. So you, your, expand, your shock is pushed further down. So you have a shock reflection and this is uh, this straight uh, normal shock kind of thing is called the Mach reflection because this normal shock reflects with the, uh, interact with the oblique shock here. So this kind of uh, shock shock interactions are also possible and we are going to analyze a few of these uh, kind of, uh, these green lines are called expansion fans which we will deal it 
in the next week uh, lecture okay so we'll try to do so this is a uh, this is a uh, over expanded nozzle what this scenario is so when it uh, goes further down if the back pressure is further down than uh, lower than pb critical 3 you will have the under expansion so this is this over expansion happens here and this phenomena what we have drawn here happens in an over expanded nozzle okay so what we will do is we will uh, try to evaluate uh, we will do a numerical problem to to see what happens further with uh, this kind of uh, analysis